Okay, so we're going to take a look at the second part of a discussion on matrix and image operations, really a discussion about loops inside of other loops. All right, so this is part two of the discussion. If you want to look at uh, more detail about uh, how we do image manipulation and image processing, take a look at the section in the Stormy Attaway textbook on image processing. All right, so matrix operations uh, are really standard kind of things that are done within MATLAB. They, um, uh, they, they typically involve uh, the, the use of loops, whether it's a single loop, a double loop, so one loop inside of another loop, or three loops, one inside another inside another. All right, so we got a for loop there inside, another for loop there, and then another for loop there. An example, as we move towards one loop inside of another loop inside of another loop, it's important to sort of give a, a perspective from the from the uh, uh, sort of general purpose per direction. And uh, when you're doing linear algebra in uh, in your program, uh, in in the, the learning that you do for your for your engineering degree, it's it's often seen um, that you have to do operations like this, um, matrix summations, where you take one matrix, let's say it's matrix A, and you add it to matrix B, and you get an answer matrix C. Matrix A might have, for instance, uh, three rows and two columns. Matrix B would have to have the same, so three rows and two columns. Matrix C, which is the addition of these two, will also have three rows and two columns. It will have the same number of columns as rows as A and B. And you can see it sort of in, in more detailed form here, where we've uh, numbered using subscripts each of the individual elements. So the first subscript right here refers to the row, the second to the column. So this is the first row, first column. This is the first row, second column. This is the first row, last column, because there are M elements in width. Okay, it's uh, like this. It basically means the number of columns that you have. In the second row, we change the first of the subscripts. So this is row two, column one, row two, column two, row two, last column, all the way down, etc. That's an etc. right there. That's an etc. there. That's an etc. there. There's another etc. And that's an etc. right there. So we get down to this, we get all the way down here. And this is still the first column. But the last row, the last row is the nth row. So row n, column one, row n, column two, row n, column m. Okay, and you'll notice that the last, the very, in the far corner right here, the very last element in B, so this is A, and this is B, right here. Here's your addition right here. All right, the last row, last column, is referred to as lowercase b, subscript n, m, whereas the first one is row one, column one, so B one one, B row one, row two. The end result is that you have C one one, C one two, this right here is C, whoops, C one M. This one over here is C N M. This one right here. Whoop. My tablet's slowing down here. This one at this corner right here is going to be C N one. Okay. C N one. This is C right here. This because that's the equal. Okay. That's the result. So that's basically how you add two of them. You take this element right here, add it to that element right there, 
end result is this. You take this element right here, add it to that element right there, and your result is right there. Okay, so it can get pretty messy, and uh, but it, but it's straightforward. It as as long as and it's scalable, and as long as you set up your problem right, your loops right in MATLAB, you can get through each of these elements and do the summation that you want to do. Okay, so to to do this algorithm like raw, when when you program it up, basically what you have to consider is that there are two, two for loops. There's the first for loop which takes care of each row and another for loop that takes care of each column. So basically you have one loop in here that's re uh, responsible for columns and it's found inside another loop that's responsible for rows. Now you can reverse them, okay? So you could do columns first and rows second. Um, but the way that this would work, if you do it like this, is basically if you had a matrix and we looked at it like a, like a cube. Or a square, sorry. Okay. You would have, say in this case, we have, uh, let's see, that's four elements across, three elements down. Let's color code this. Let's go with green for our rows. Okay. And, uh, and that means that, oh, and then we're going to do, let's see what color could we use. We could use blue. Let's use blue for our columns. Okay. Like that. All right. So it means that we come into we come into uh, this algorithm fresh, and we're going to start with the first row. So we start, we come in, okay? We come in and we deal with the first row. So that's the first loop. So the first loop is now done in that it's executed its first part, and now we have to deal with all the columns. So we switch over to a blue color. Where's my blue? There it is. And then my inner for loop deals with this element, then that element, then that element, then that element. And now the inner loop is done. And so now what we have to do is we go back to the outer element, or the, sorry, the outer loop, like that. And so we're now back to, let's see, we finished here, we go here, and now we go to this inner loop. So we're here, we go da 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 like that. Okay, we're now at the end of this loop, we've done it a bunch of times. Now we're going to go back there. We switch to the next row. Come on, there we go. We're back in the inner loop and we deal with each of those. And then once we're done, Once we're done, we now exit. Like that. Stop with a P right there. Okay? That's basically what's going to happen here. And in order for this to, to work, basically if you if you code it up in um, in MATLAB, you you have some 
matrix A and some matrix B, and they are full of numbers, we'll assume that those are defined ahead of time. What we do is we check to see what the number of rows and the number of columns is inside of A, and A has the same size as B, and it will have the same size as C at the very end. We then initialize C to be a matrix of nothing, of basically zeros, okay? And then we have two rows, or sorry, we have two, uh, uh, two, uh, two uh, loops. And the two loops, let's see, the inner loop, the column loop was uh, blue. Okay, so then this, so I'll make sure I get the color scheme right and consistent. So blue is that loop. And green, as I showed before, is the other one. This one right here. Okay, so you have one loop nested inside of the other loop. So the blue loop is nested inside of, so this is the green loop, this is the blue loop, one inside of the other, okay? So it's nested together. And what we see here is we see the development of each element in C that is based on a particular row and then a particular column. And so what will end up happening is that we will end up having uh, these loops work so that you have C11 calculated and then it will be C12. So C row one, column two, then C13, C14. And then if it's, uh, if B and A are um, four columns wide, then we would have C21 because we would then switch up to the next loop, we'd loop it again, then C21, C22, C23, C24, then it'd be, say we had three column, uh, three rows, so then it'd be C31, C32, C33, C34. Okay, that's basically the, what's going to happen to create the matrix C. All right, so our matrix sum algorithm gives us a way to visit each element inside of matrix A and uh, uh, and then each each one of the elements inside of, um, well, basically it allows us to look at any uh, element inside of A, B, or C, okay? And and so that's that's really important, okay, that, that you can do that within either a creation of a summation or if you wanted to do anything else that would be associated with a two-dimensional or even three-dimensional matrix, okay? So this process of being able to uh, visit individual elements in a particular list of numbers, whether it was two-dimensional or you want to expand this out to 3D, so with depth as well, this th this is a really powerful thing. And this is seen often. Mm -hmm.